Welcome to the second example for chapter six and the first example that uses the ideas of centripetal acceleration. So what we have here is a mass that is moving in flat circles on a table. So we're gonna draw the top-down view that was in the slides of the circular motion that we're seeing here. So we have this circle, the mass, whatever point along the circle that we catch it, it's currently moving tangent to the circle. And we're told that this string has a 60 centimeter length. That is our radius because the string is tied at the center and then tied to the mass. And so we have a 60 centimeter radius. If we turn that into meters by dividing by 100 to cancel the units out, we get 0 0.6 meters. The mass is 2 kilograms, so we can put that in our list of given information. Note that we are using the kind of base problem solving method that we introduced way at the beginning of the semester that we've been modifying each chapter and we're continuing to use here. We draw the picture, we make a list of the given information as we read about it, and we have this piece of information, the two revolutions each second. That is an information about angle over time, and so we need to start to train ourselves to understand that that is the angular speed omega. Two revolutions per second. We have seen omega in radians per second, like it's supposed to be. We've also seen it in radians uh, in revolutions per minute, RPM, which is very common. This happens to be revolutions per second, so the only unit we need to change is revolutions to radians, and we get 4 pi radians per second, which is 12.6 radians per second. All right, all of that came before we even read the goal of the problem. The point of this course is to train ourselves on how to deal with situations, and we don't want to just read everything and decide that it's not a situation we think we can handle before we've, before we've even had a chance to lay out what's going on here. So we draw the picture, we make a list of the given information, and then... As we find it, we add to that. And now we realize that our goal here is to find the tension. Since tension here is a force, we know we want to look at the free body diagram. And I want to make sure we understand that this free body diagram is going to be the side view as if we had our um, eyeball here looking at it from the side along the, um, along the table. So gravity is pulling us straight down, and because the table is flat, normal force is straight up. And then the tension in the string, based on where we drew this in its circular motion around the, um, around the table, the tension is pointing to the left at the snapshot that we drew, because at that snapshot, that is towards the center of the circle, which is where centripetal acceleration points. So because this is a flat circle, a horizontal circle, we can write F net equals MA in the X direction. So we have the tension equals mass. And now we have the fact that the centripetal acceleration is written as either V squared over R or R omega squared. Because we have r and omega in our list of given information, we probably should use that version to make our lives a little bit easier. So we put in r omega squared. So we plug in the numbers that we have. Mass is 2 kilograms. The radius is 0 0.6 meters. And omega is 12.6 radians per second. All of that is squared. And the reason that I've written out the units is because I want to make sure that we're starting to understand what radians can um, and cannot do. So first of all, the number value is 2 times.
times 0 0.6 times 12.6, and the 12.6 only is the part that is squared. We can plug that into our calculators. So we'll get 190 newtons. And I want to make sure we understand where the newtons came from. Newtons, by definition, are equal to kilograms times meters per second squared. We have the kilograms, we have the meters once, and we have the seconds squared. The one that disappeared was the radians, but we know that poof, cloud of uh, smoke and glitter, it's gone. It's allowed to do that. So when we have forces in this problem, it is not significantly different than all throughout chapter 4 and 5. Forces are in newtons, but it is sometimes useful to make sure we recognize why that has to be. All right, it's a pretty big tension, but keep in mind that this thing is circling twice a second. So if you are having a... Um, mass that large go around in circles that quickly, you have to have a pretty powerful um, string or rope. It's not going to be a small thread because that thread will break. It has to be able to withstand these amounts of tensions. All right, so that is the entire problem. Now, one thing that I really encourage you to, um, to do for each of the examples in this section is to make a list somewhere in your notes of all the different situations for what forces were part of F net. Because I wanna make sure we understand that each circular motion problem can have a different set of forces added or subtracted or anything that are causing the acceleration. And every time the point is that we look at the free body diagram that we've learned to make. So in this example, the forces that went into F net in the circle direction was just FT. So that can be the start of a longer list somewhere in your notes. I highly encourage that, and I'll try to make sure to highlight that each of our examples in this section. All right, I will see you soon for more examples.